Brandon, you took, took control of that 19 to two run, I guess, maybe the first half. Like, what did you see that was working well for you guys on both ends? Well, you know, I think our defense was really good on our activity. We got some transition opportunities. We moved the ball. But I think, you know, when you look at this game, our rebounding was really critical. When you play a team that's plus eight on the glass, uh, they pretty much out-rebound everybody they play. And we knew we, we had to really battle them in that area. And, you know, we out-rebounded them by 12. So I think that's the one stat that sticks out to me. But our defense, I think, was really the key as well. Our activity level, whether it be off the dribble, contesting shots, and limiting them to limiting their second shot opportunities. This is kind of what you guys are going to need, getting contributions from everybody now that your roster is kind of short. And it seemed like everybody gave you something tonight. Yeah, that's the way it has to be. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of good players left. Uh, we, we have some that aren't available. But the guys that come in have to be able to do what they're capable of doing and compete and, and play mistake-free basketball. You know, we made a bunch of mistakes early. Really proud of Joe Toussaint. You know, he struggled early, came back, gave us a huge lift in the second half. You know, Bakari was, was great uh, when he was out there. But to a man, like like you said, Rob, everybody that played was was really good. I mean, we run a play at the end of the first half. I put Riley Till in because we're in foul trouble. He makes a great feed to Weiss Camp. We end the half with a made three. You know, you know, all you think about is Joe making a shot, but that play was had to be the ball had to be delivered by somebody, it was delivered by Riley Till. You got a shooter like Joe, and he has a night like he did Tuesday. Do you, do you know deep down he's going to come out and have a night like this? You've been doing this long enough. Well, he usually has nights like this. I mean, that's kind of what we expect. It's kind of what he expects from himself. He came back and shot it well in practice. I'm sure he got up extra shots. I saw him. Uh, but we're just going to keep going to him, no matter what he shoots. When Kempsel hit the three pointer, did, did that was that like kind of a moment that sort of surged through the rest of his team? Oh, it did. It did. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, the, the guys respond to in, in, in that way. Uh, you know, we swung it to him. They, his defender was on the block. He never moved. And, and, and Cordell didn't hesitate. He just pulled. And he swishes it. And that, that was a big play in the game in that stretch, especially. Yesterday, you really talked about your team not offering no excuses, not feeling sorry for itself. And the players echoed that and said the same thing. When you have a performance like this and the toughness that they display, I'm sure you've got to have a lot of pride in that. A tremendous amount of pride in this group. Uh, but I think, more importantly, they have pride in themselves and, and they recognize, okay, we didn't shoot it well the other night. We did some things down the stretch, the last four or five possesses where we turned it over. We're in a position to win that game, despite shooting four for 33, but we turned it over coming down the stretch. You know, tonight, I thought we really stayed together collectively, defensively. And it's a little bit easier in the first half because defense is front of the bench. So the bench was really into the game. I mean, we were screaming, not just the coaches, all the players. In the second half, it's just the five guys that are out there. The crowd was great. You know, we can't coach the defense in the second half. They have to rely on each other and they have to communicate. You know, they're running middle ball screen, four out. They're posting Smith. They're overloading, they're, you know, they're moving Cowan around and they're trying to take us off the dribble. So it's critical that we match up properly. So uh, I think the maturity that we showed in preparation for this game coming back uh, from a tough loss uh, is, is really, I think, what's impressive. Who's kind of the leader in that regard as far as <laughs> flushing it and, and preparing for, for obviously a good team like this? Well, it's not one guy. Uh, you know, I think if you were to say, okay, who are the who are the vocal guys? It's Connor and Luca. You know, but uh, you know, Pemsel's going to speak up. Uh, Macari will. You know, Joe's quiet, but he just kind of takes care of his business. You know, Joe Toussaint is still learning in that respect, but uh, there's a lot of confidence in himself. Uh, I think Ryan Creener is a guy that, you know, as a senior, you know, I think he he kind of fulfills. Also, with Connor and with Luca, a captain's position. Uh, he's got a maturity about him. He's got a real keen intellect when it comes to this game. Uh, he's got the whole thing figured out. What we're trying to run, what our what our counters are, <coughs> what they're trying to do to us, 
how we have to combat that if they're pressing, if they're zoning on out of bounds, out of bounds execution, execution after a timeout. I mean, he's a guy that is really, really smart. And you know, you put him out there with, you know, with with Connor and Luca and, and some guys that really know what they're doing. At least we can execute, and uh, that's what we did tonight. Would a common player, maybe most players, find it hard to shake off a one for ten like Reese Camp did? I, I, you know, he doesn't seem to rattle one way or the other. I mean, he just, he didn't get too down on himself the other night after the game. He kept shooting. I think the thing that was impressive about his game the other night, okay, the jumpers weren't falling. He still got 21 points. He drove the ball. He got offensive rebound putbacks. Maybe the biggest play of the game, you know, if they had any chance coming down the stretch, his offensive rebound putback and one, you know, kind of typifies who he is. He's just going to keep coming. He's going to keep shooting. We're going to keep setting him up. Our guys are going to look for him and try to find him. And like I said, I mean, he, he came right back the very next day in practice and wore it out. He's got 70 points in his last three games. It seems like he's like more willing to take on this challenge of career leading this team here in the last Well, games. I think he has to, you know, especially without CJ. We'll see, we'll see what we do with CJ next week. But, you know, a lot's going to fall on him, certainly, and he's been able to handle it. What did you say to Joe Toussaint when you took him out? He looked <laughs> Like settled down when he got yeah, back. Yeah, I, I just said, Joe, you know, you're gonna, we're gonna come back to you. Just settle down, stay ready. You're gonna get your chance. Study it, okay? And uh, he was really under control. I thought we put him back in, uh, and he he attacked. Like, you just don't put your head down and attack a team like Merlin. You've got to wait, wait, go, and that's what he did. And that, that was what was really impressive about about his performance. I thought. Just a couple more questions. Coach, with the crowd tonight, the weather outside, what can you say about the energy they brought? Well, to be honest with you, when I walked down the tunnel, I didn't expect to see much. You know, I knew the high school games were canceled at noon. I didn't think it would be like this. Uh, and, you know, when you're when you're playing a short bench, you need energy. And, and our crowd provided that for us tonight uh, in a big way. And we just couldn't be more thankful. Ryan, just in terms of uh, early on, it looked like Maryland was doing a pretty good job on those two guys. On, on the was it just patience on your part, getting to both spots, getting them getting to their spots? You know, I, I wish I could tell you that it was, you know, something I did or it was planned. It, it, a lot of guys get their shot blocked the first two times they shoot it, like Luca did. They struggle. It, it, nothing affects him. He just keeps coming. He, you know, he'll figure out a way. You know, maybe I give a better shot. Like he may go to the other side of the rim. Uh, you know, Joe Wieskamp. You know, he just keeps moving without it. But I thought tonight he shot it off the catch, but he also did things off the dribble. And that's that's what he has to do. You know, when he's doing that and Luca's doing that, then everybody else can settle down and then we we find ways to get him the ball. And I thought, you know, our guys really locked into that. No, we knew those guys need to see it. We got it to them. Your corner three seemed to get Jazz Owen to use the one off the off the inbounds play. Yes. You know, we ran a play for him and, and they and they killed it. And he just popped out to the corner, and then they were they went to the next option defensively, and he, he was open. It was a good, good find. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Yep.